Chasing on day off Tough love But hold up No chase on Kendrick Lamar's fifth studio album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, is a very peculiar project, especially coming off the heels of his last studio album, Damn, released five years ago. The project is a very heavy and lengthy self-reflection of not only his life, who he was, what he did, and what he experienced, but also his career, especially the things that have happened in those five years. This project is very much a self-critique rather than an album that you would put on for a vibe or for a good time, making this a very bleak and dark project and what should easily be Kendrick's most mature album to date. He starts the album off with United in Grief, going through his 20-year career in the music industry. He discusses the benefits and drawbacks, also critiquing the use of jewelry and other luxuries as a way to protect your social status in the public eye. What is a rapper with jewelry? A way that I show my maturity. Which not only other rappers have done, but he as well, for the sake of the culture. The new Mercedes with black G-Wagon away from it was all for rap. I was 28 years young, 20 million in tax, bought a couple of mansions just for practice. The track also tells us that Kendrick has checked himself in a therapy to deal with mental health issues. I went and got me a therapist, I can debate all my theories and sharing it well. Which the topic of therapy becomes a device to tell his story throughout the project. As I said earlier, this album is very divisive to me, as even though I love he's at his most mature and deep since To Pip a Butterfly, I can't help but feel like some of the instrumentals on the project don't mesh with me as well as others, like N95. Where I do appreciate the message of criticizing the world's response to the COVID-19 pandemic. And the culture around the music industry and boosting streams and the obsession of materialistic lifestyles. Take off the weird ass jewelry, I'm gonna take 10 steps, then I'm taking off top off. Take off from fabricate streams and the microwave memes, it's a real world outside. I do not love the instrumental at all. Maybe it's the way it's structured, and how there are so many switches and things going on in the background, which may appeal to others, but doesn't for me. And at times, the people featured in tracks don't work well with the track at all. Like while I do love Savior Interlude, which features Baby Keem, you ever see a mama strung out while you study division? Your uncle ever stole from you day after Christmas? Seen both of those in the county jail visits, the first and the 15th, the only religion. I can't help but feel like his inclusion in Savior feels awkward and skewered in. Beach, are you happy for me? Millie, are you happy for me? Smile on my face, but are you happy for me? Yeah. And that's another theme that Kendrick goes over in the album that celebrities like himself are inspirations and they should not be looked at as, as gods or saviors. Now going back to how dark the album is, when I first listened to We Cry Together, I can't help but think this is a lengthier and more toxic version of For Free. It's as if Kendrick went full 2000 Eminem, where it feels very slim shady. You know what? Fuck you, bitch. Fuck you, bitch. No, fuck you, nigga. No, fuck you, bitch. No, fuck you, nigga. Fuck you, bitch. Fuck you, nigga. And I'm just brushing the surface of the album's tracks. Not that the whole album is dark. You still got songs that keep an upbeat similar to some tracks off a of damn like Die Hard. I hope I'm not too late to set my demon straight. Purple Hearts. And Mirror. Which is very odd for the pacing of the album where you have songs like Crown, where it feels very long, slow, and cinematic. Then the next song is Silent Hill, which gives a very substantially different tone. For me at least, it feels very jarring if I were listening to it from beginning to end, which is another thing I have about this album. This may be his weakest in his discography in overall replay value for me. Maybe it has overly dedicated and section 80 beat, but I'm not really sure about that either. Even if it's very well mixed, and it follows deep personal themes as to Pimp a Butterfly, I feel like it doesn't muster strong replay value for me, when comparing it to Damn, Good Kid Mad City, or to Pimp a Butterfly. Nevertheless, I love the decent amount of tracks of the album, like Save Your Interlude, Purple Hearts, United in Grief, and Father Time. And even though I don't love them, I still like Mirror, Savior, Mr. Morale, and N95. But overall, I feel like it's gonna land somewhere in the damn territory. I still have To Pip a Butterfly, Good Kid Mad City, 
and Untitled Mastered over it. Which, funny enough, I feel like this album is the flip version of Damn, where Damn is an album full of hits, but not with a strong message or themes. And Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers is a very hitless album, with a lot of mature, heavy messages that haven't been seen since The Bimpo Butterfly. And even then, this album still puts up a fight in terms of concept, but I feel like it's musically not as thorough as that album. I'm giving this a very good 7.7 .7 out of 10. How do you feel about the album? Agree or disagree? Leave your thoughts and comments down in the section below.